How do I know David Woodwell? How does anybody know David Woodwell? Do we really know? David Woodwell. What most impressed me about David when he first came in was, of course, the mustache. Um, once I got beyond the mustache, I was really able to understand him as a person. David and I go back to 1889, and his family, as members of the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club, didn't maintain their dam. Uh, my family was down in the steel mills of Johnstown working, and so that's where the relationship really started. But I've known David professionally for the last probably 30 plus years, and he has been a co-collaborator, a co-thinker, a friend, and like a brother to me. The Pennsylvania Environmental Council historically has always had a big tent. The goal is to get people with different viewpoints into that tent. To me, the, the Peck way is a very inclusive way, and David has always epitomized that. The Peck way is actually really just the David Woodwell way. The fact that David was always willing to walk into the room and have those conversations, I think that really resonates resonated with people that we weren't in there necessarily to do combat, we were there to work together. The one that really stands out and I think that demonstrates why he was so effective was the Center for Responsible Shale Development. In that debate there were strong voices on two sides of an issue, should we or shouldn't we, and Davitt consistently found a way to put the issues in perspective and think about what's best for Pennsylvania. If that industry was going to be here, how were we going to make sure it had the minimum impact? David, in a way, is old Pittsburgh. He has seen what, what Pittsburgh was like during the heyday of the steel industry. He's seen the collapse. He's seen the reclamation of the riverfronts. David was a big part of that, not just on investing in improving the rivers, but educating all of us on you know what that means. When he was running River Life, I mean, its focus was the trail system along the rivers in Pittsburgh. Because the water had been cleaned up to a significant degree and people wanted to get back out on those. The idea of conveying of the world that our three rivers, once terribly polluted by industry, was now a place where you could hold the Bassmaster it was actually a brilliant idea, even if I do think it was kind of fishy. David really brought recreation into the forefront and getting outdoor recreation and businesses on the map in a big way. David has been talking about Pennsylvania's outdoor economy for as long as I can remember. And now in 2024, we really see that coming into the forefront through the governor's office and the attention being paid there. Many of those concepts have their seeds in David's brain. Building trails takes a lot of cooperation, a lot of collaboration, and David was really good at bringing all that together. When the Richard King Mellon Foundation began to look at how we could help drive ecotourism in our region, mountain biking, regular trail biking, and frankly, water trails, who did we turn to? We went to David. David was the one who had ideas about how to bring in other groups Groups, how to use some resources he had. It's just kind of remarkable to me that a statewide environmental organization is working across state lines with the Industrial Heartland Trails Coalition, with CRTI. That has everything to do with Davit. The big vision about connecting those trails, that's something that Davit's had from the beginning. And he also walked the walk or rode the bike, so to speak. These trails were something he intimately knew about because he rode them. I think that Davit's a big picture thinker. He's a visionary. He has has a mind that generates a million projects at a time. He's brought his particular brand of enthusiasm and creativity to the job, and he has really empowered the people around him. The PEC staff is amazing, and that's not by accident. He seems to be acutely aware of other people's needs and sensitivities. One thing that I've kind of learned in public life is you can get a lot done when you give other people the credit, and I think he understood that. He's self-deprecating. As a friend, I would say rightfully so. It's never about David. Um, it's rarely about Peck. He doesn't want to say he's done anything. He wants to say, well, all these people that you know I brought together and they're doing it. David is just a big teddy bear. That's the way he looks, and that's the way he acts. Though I never worked at Peck, I was around there enough to know it had to be a really fun place to work because David is such a fun guy. He's a lot of fun to be with and he's fun because he really is passionate about the work. His uh, force of personality, his positive outlook, his uh, optimism is infectious. I think David is optimistic you have to be. In this work you have to be. At Peck we often talk about legacies in our work. 
uh, legacies that we've been left to deal with and the legacies that we will leave behind us. Davit has left quite a legacy. 20, 30 years ago, Pennsylvania was an example of how things weren't necessarily done the right way. I think Pennsylvania now is very much a model. Peck and Davin in particular really had a hand in that. Davit, you have been a champion for so many people. You've made a real difference in my career. I really have appreciated getting to know you as a collaborator, a co-conspirator, and a friend. What you've done for, for this community, for all of us in southwestern Pennsylvania, I know it's your home, I know it's a place you love, and you've made it better. Davit, we promise to continue to honor the work, the hard work that you did, and we promise to have fun along the way while we're doing it. Congratulations, Davit, and thank you for your wonderful leadership.